Well, it's no secret that the Omicron outbreak has stretched the Kiwi workforce. As staff forego holidays and work extra hours to cover for their colleagues who are isolating. Many may be feeling close to burnout, but just how overworked are we? Here with the data is Infometrics Chief Economist Brad Olson. Good morning to you, Brad. So lovely to have you in the studio. It's great Welcome. to be here. Um, are we overworked? Well, we're certainly worried that we're getting that way. We know that people have been working a huge amount throughout the COVID-19 pandemic over the last few years to try and keep the economy ticking over. We know that the numbers are suggesting that things are in an all right position, but you worry that with so many people off work, we're sort of burning everyone out. We're uh, burning the candle very much at both ends to keep the lights on. And what surprised us is that although we were seeing 300,000 odd people at any one time during the Omicron peak out of work, not able to go to work either with COVID-19 or having to isolate at home, we actually saw that the amount of work done in the economy was only 0.2% lower than normal. And that surprised us. It said that somehow we'd been able to keep the economy running with so many people out of work. Digging through the numbers, what we've very much seen is that other people who were still employed were still in the office. They were uh, very much trying to pick up this, uh, the slack and keep things moving. But you do worry that you can only do that for so long because at some point people are going to be too burnt out to continue. There's almost some contradictory numbers in there though, aren't there? That if the, it only drops by 0.2%, you know, is that a bit of a concern? Well, I, I think it's the sort of thing where you might be able to do that in the short term. You know, you can get people to, um, you know, work extra hours and, 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 and you know, pick up those odd jobs and similar for a bit. But if you do that consistently, people are just not going to have the energy to continue. And I think what was surprising is we know that there was an obvious increase in the number of people off with COVID-19. Uh, you know, I think between 40 and 70% increases either with COVID-19 or having to isolate. Uh, but you do look forward. We know that we're having a real challenge around the brain drain and actually finding talent. So at the moment, if we're trying to use our current workforce and squeeze absolutely everything out of them, the worry is, well, do they have the ability to take time off to recharge or are we just sort of making them run and run and run until they collapse? So what happens when they come come back and they decide they want actually to take their annual leave or a break extra pressure on employers. Absolutely, and that's the sort of thing where at some point we are pushing closer and closer, in my mind, to breaking point where the economy goes, look, we've got a lot of work to do, but there's just not the people to do it, either because they're off isolating or because everyone says, look, I need a break at some point. We know that some analysis of leave data from Australia points towards a 24% increase in the amount of leave that people have. We know that they're storing that up for longer because, well, they haven't been able to take it, of course. You know, you've had uh, lockdowns and similar you haven't been able to travel quite as much but increasingly everyone's going if I take a break now I might be leaving you know the team out of it because they're not going to have enough resources to keep going. That's right that affects the entire workflow they're entitled to leave but again we talk about the the crunch on the employers but also the workforce in general people won't you know restaurants we know there's they're understaffed at the moment is that going to be a long-term effect on the market do you think? Well that's certainly the worry without uh, in our minds the ability to bring quite as many people back into the country but also with more people leaving at the moment than coming in in general. That's a big, big shift. And at the same time is that we know that there's so, so much intense competition. It's not just any one or two sectors. It's just about every sector is crying out for workers wanting to try and find those staff members. And so very much the worry is you've got so many people who are absolutely tearing at the bit trying to get work done because there's so much coming in the front door that at some point you go, is this actually manageable for New Zealand? Are we overworking ourselves? Are we starting to put ourselves in that real pressure cooker? environment where some, some, at some point something must give and that's I guess the worry that we're now in a position where we've kept things going, that's absolutely true the economy's in a good place but how much more stretch has the economy got left in it On the flip side though, as we come to grips with the virus and perhaps we get that herd immunity, we're not isolating for the seven day periods it may write itself those numbers in time. Will it be a you, slow burn, though? I, I think it will be a slow burn. I mean, that, that's certainly hopeful that we see better things coming through. But we know that uh, at the moment, by our estimates, there's still over 100,000 people on average that are either isolating with COVID or who are working from home or, or, or staying at home and isolating. So um, those numbers sort of haven't yet come back to the more normal levels or, or seen more, more people be able to get back into the office to the degree that I think we'd need to see to have that activity come back up. So. Uh, 
we are seeing better things, if you will, but certainly the pressure is on for workers, for businesses to keep things running. And so the economic motor is very much ticking over, but you do worry if we've sort of got enough in the tank to get us the full uh, to, to, to the end, because at the moment we are very much running the mo motor red hot. We do not want employees limping to the finish line, because we all wind down to Christmas on a normal year, and we know the last two years have been anything but normal. Absolutely. And for Metric's Chief Economist Brad Olson, lovely to have you in studio. Thanks for your uh, expertise.